Good morning, everyone. For those who just joined Cube India, welcome. I hope you guys enjoy as much as we are doing so far. And for those who are being with us since 8 a.m. in the morning, please, guys, hang in there. Lunch time is almost there. I would like to start the presentation by asking you guys a simple question. How many of you have worked with eBPF and its usage on 5G applications? OK, I see a couple of hands. It's a bit tough, right? I know. Uh, let's make it more simple then. How many of you know about this famous character, Ant-Man from The Avengers? All right, guys, I know, I know. So we'll would be crazy to say that Ant-Man is to the quantum realm as the eBPF is to the inner core of a Linux kernel for a 5G? Sounds crazy? Today, Prakash, I myself, Marco, will talk about this in the topic, paradigm shift in 5G deployment. It's a promise of eBPF for open source 5G cores, performance, and security. I will start with just uh, uh, listing the content. We start with the introduction of ourselves, followed by a problem statement and hypothesis. Then we will discuss about the state of art, uh, followed by the project design and environment we prepare for the presentation. Last, we will work on the verification and results and some takeaways. OK, let's move on. Prakash? Yeah, thanks, Marco. Uh, hi, guys. So my name is Prakash. This is a brief introduction of mine. So I'm from Andhra. And my tech journey began when I did my bachelor's in computer science, followed by post-graduation from UT Austin. Right now, currently, I work as a cloud architect in Accenture Japan. And there, I try to develop and deploy cloud solutions. And my hobby is doing snowboarding and having fun. So looking forward to having a great session with you all. Over to you, Marco. Amazing. Hey, Prakash. Smart guy right there, guys. Smart guy. About me, my name is Marco Gonzalez. I'm from Lima, Peru, South America. I've been working in telecom for over 14 years now, a long time. And now I work as a 5G solution architect at Ericsson Japan. In my free time, as an AWS community builder, I talk about AWS, 5G, and just a mix of both. You can check out my, my blog, the link. And also sports, I love soccer. OK, guys, that's enough for introduction. Let's jump into the good stuff. Before that, a short disclaimer. Um, this presentation contains some information that belongs to our personal opinion and insights. That being said, we did not want to um, reflect any position or views for our companies. Please, guys, take a look at the following diagram over here. We tried to summarize in five items all the current challenges 5G is facing right now. The first one, challenges in performance and security. Every system we have right now are facing these evolving threats of security and demands um, growth speed and reliability. Since 5G entered the picture, it has been the same. Second one is the demand and complex, sorry, dynamic and complex 5G demands. 5G is by no means, guys, static. It changed over the time. It has changed since 2018, and we will keep changing. And for that, we require a robust, yet flexible solution to manage them. Third one is a very common scenario. Improve user experience under the most difficult environments, let's say, overload scenarios. That's what customer wants, quality, always. Fourth one is the current dependency we have, the high dependency on current modules and proprietary hardware for 5G solutions. It's a big one, guys, and we'll talk about this today. Last but not least, the cloud solution, multi-cloud and hybrid solution we have so far. Yet, there have so many approaches that fall short when we want to deploy 5G solutions. Based on these five items, we prepare the following statement. If 5G core can coexist with eBPF, then can performance and security be improved? By the end of the discussion, we will know the answer about this question. Let's start with some state of art uh, about eBPF. And for that, let's focus on this diagram. It shows a conventional container networking solution. You can see the pod, which the application can be anything, can be 5G, for instance, sockets, IP tables, 
Linux routing, and an Ethernet interface. This pod connects to the node or the host node using this virtual Ethernet. And then we see again a duplicate view, right? We see again in the host nodes, IP tables, routing, and of course, more overhead. It helps us to solve the most common solutions right there. Uh, create stacks, isolate pods, and uh, make communication between them. But in fact, they add a big overhead, and we'll talk about this. I will zoom in and try to mention the three most well-known overheads we have so far. The first one is the context switch overheads. It happens when the packages go through the Ethernet in the pod all the way to the Ethernet in the host, the node. The second one is perhaps the most impactful one, is the IP tables overhead, where the packages go traverse to the pod uh, from the port to the, to the node, we see all these overheads. And last, we have the um, contract or connection tracking overheads. This is how IP tables identify what to do next with the package. The summary of the stream. So then we ask ourselves, what is eBPF doing then? How is eBPF solving this? In simple words, eBPF is Removing all these IP tables overheads, eBPF use customized packet filtering, processing, and programmable network data path on each Kubernetes node. And this allows us to minimize first the context switching. Then it reduces completely the IP tables overhead. And that makes us have the full latency and CPU overhead reduced. Let's see some examples about this in the following slide. A key difference between IP tables and uh, eBPF is the latency. In this example we took from uh, reference, um, there are 100,000 sequential requests being sent to a Kubernetes service. And this is not just any, any kind of request. There are TCP connect requests and response, which means the whole cycle. And we can see by far how eBPF overlasts, outlasts um, IP tables. And as we increase the number of services, we see this difference way bigger. Another difference that we can highlight is how eBPF solves this IP table rule, this mess we have right now operating this. For those who have been into the um, operation work, Handle these kind of lines of work or these lines of IP tables can be really messy. So how eBPF solve this? Well, simply just remove them. No more IP tables um, set up. And this is key, guys, because as we increase services in our solution, it becomes a crucial part of how to maintain this service. Which leads us to the next slide, 5G core. We mentioned before that our goal is to coexist eBPF and 5G core. And we must understand three key points first. Telco APIs. Guys, 5G core is for developers. It will be like this, and we will continue to be like this. Enable 5G for developers and APIs exposure in 5G network. Why we mention this? Because the goal, the ultimate goal in our view, is monetize 5G and cloud app solutions. It's hard to say, but it's the truth. I'm not going to into the 5G topology because we can take a whole new session about this. I just want to highlight this small component here, network exposure function. It is right now standardized by 3GPP as the edge how to talk with different applications worldwide. And then we ask how we can improve this. What happens when our element needs to handle thousands, hundreds of services in a single infrastructure? Let's talk about our demo next. Finally, um, we believe in open source. Our demo, our demonstration is focused extremely on open source projects. In this presentation, we have used EURAN SIM and Open5GS for mainly two reasons, guys. First, the versions are really stable. We have deployed, implemented in 
AWS environments. And second, guys, there's a huge community behind this. And community means help, support, and efficiency. All right, Prakash. Thank you, Marco. So now let's get into the project design and environment. So if we go back to the beginning, the problem statement which Marco mentioned. So if 5G core can be deployed along with the EPPF, then can it optimize the performance? So that was the main question. So let's answer that to this project design which we executed. So for this, we deployed the 5G core in two different scenarios. In the first scenario, we tried to deploy UV RAN SIM as one Ubuntu virtual machine and the 5GS core in another Ubuntu virtual machine. And we established networking between both of those VMs. And after that, we attached a NAT gateway for one-way connectivity outside. And we attached an internet gateway so that whenever the UV tries to, or whenever the UV sends a request, then it goes through open 5GS core and it accesses the internet through the internet gateway. So this is the first scenario. And let's check the second scenario. And here, the main thing to notice is we utilize the traditional IP table setup here. And in the second scenario, we deployed the 5G core as a Kubernetes pod and keeping the UV RAN SIM as a virtual machine itself. So our main focus here is to identify the metrics and the performance of the 5G core itself. So that's the reason we kept the UV RAN SIM as a virtual machine separately. And here as well, we Establish the networking between both the UV RAN SIM Ubuntu VM and the 5GS core. And there's a NAT gateway for one-way connectivity. And here as well, there's IGW attached. So whenever the UV tries to access the internet, so the flow will be from the UV RAN SIM to the 5GS core and again to the internet gateway. So these are the two setups which we executed. And now let's look at the components inside the 5GS core. Before that, one more thing to point out here is in the first setup, as I mentioned, so we use the traditional IP Linux tables. And here, we use the Cilium operator, which is eBPF enabled. So now, let's look, and, let's look into the open 5 score scorepod, which we deploy, and see what are the components of that. So without going into too much detail, these are the 5G core components. We have, these are the 5G core components present in our pod. If you see here, we have AMF, SMF, UPF, NRF, et cetera. So, and this raises the question, what are we trying to achieve through this setup? So, so there are different scenarios in 5G. There's roaming, et cetera. So we are trying to achieve three different scenarios. The first one is the UV initial registration. So the UV registers to the existing 5G core following the security authentication and radio connectivity. So this is the first scenario we are implementing. And the second scenario is PDU session establishment. So the UV, the user equipment, requests both the RAN and core resource to start exchanging data traffic. So that is the second one. And let's check the third one. And here, we are trying to provision the operations. So we try to register a new UE and an existing one in the 5G core database. So through this setup and through these scenarios, we are trying to see how can the performance be improved only if these scenarios are considered. Now let's jump into the verification and see the results of that. Yeah. So after we deployed the setup to simulate the traffic, so we need for those three specific scenarios, we wrote two bash scripts. So the first bash script, it generates the UV traffic. And when I say generate the UV traffic, it means creating the UV users. So it all depends on the IP address availability of the subnet itself. So through those two bash scripts, in one, we are trying to create the user equipment. We are trying to increase the user equipment. And in another script, we are trying to create the UV RAN SIM links. So through that way, we are, trying, we are generating the traffic here. So after simulating this traffic to jot down the metrics, we focused on the following KPIs. So these are the following KPIs which we followed. First one is the NFEA KPIs, and second one is the 5G KPIs. So the first one, we are trying to check the CPU utilization in, for those three specific scenarios. And next one is the memory utilization. The third one is the network throughput. And the fourth one is the network latency. And when it comes to 5G KPIs, we considered the initial user registration failure. So it, it mainly focuses on the AMF component of the 5G core. And the next one is the service request failure ratio. So it focuses on the AMF and the SMF connectivity. So those kind of specific scenarios. And the third one, if you see the number of subscribers, that is mainly for the SMF. So for the phase one, we try to focus on the NFEA KPIs and this performance, how this, how this performance can be improved. So if you can see here, 
These are the results of the performance after simulating the user traffic. If you notice here the CPU utilization, the average CPU utilization when we executed those specific scenarios, the average utilization when the eBPF is enabled is 0.24%. And the average utilization when we use the, uh, the traditional IP tables, you can see it's 0.47%. So one more thing to point out and note down is that we, for the dimensioning part, we just use one, one vCPU and two gigs of RAM for the 5G core part and the Ubuntu VM as well. So these, these kind of percentage calculation has been done based on those dimensioning. So here you can notice that if you see here, the average utilization of 0.24% and 0.47%. So there's around 48% improvement when we use eBPF part. So it reduces the potential bottlenecks and reduces the memory uh, CPU overhead. And you can see the next one as well. In the memory utilization, there's 18.9% and 29%. And here as well, we can notice that a significant reduction of memory overhead which is going on. And if we check the network latency part, so if you see here, the 2.27, the 2.2 milliseconds, and the next one is 2.8 milliseconds. So whenever the eBPF is enabled, so we notice the 2.2 milliseconds and it's 2.8. So if you see, the improvement is around 20%. So that is not a small thing to note down, and this can cause significant improvements in the future things which you are going to do in the 5G core when implemented with the eBPF. So through these results and from these verification results, you can see that there's significant improvements. With this, we go back to our main problem statement. So OT Marco. Thank you, Prakash. Yep. OK, guys, at the beginning of the presentation, we asked a question. Can eBPF coexist with 5G core and not only that, but improve latency and CPU and security? The answer, guys, is yes. And we show these great numbers. We just did a demo with over 100 UE connecting. We can escalate to more. Of course, it requires hardware. It requires research for more colleagues. A few takeaways. Guys, in this presentation, we talk about three core use cases. As Prakash mentioned, there are many use cases for 5G, guys. It's not only one or just 10. The purpose of this presentation is to show that eBPF can support, can be an ally to 5G, can improve many features, not only performance, security, observability, monitoring, and even dashboard visibility was improved using eBPF existing solution, open source solutions. And not only that, we proved that we can implement it along with open source 5G solutions. So we help the open source community. Our goal today is to encourage any of you who is into 5G or wants, just want to try eBPF and 5G to please use as a reference and keep researching and keep investigating. Guys, I hope you enjoyed today's Cube Day. This was all for all for our side. Thank you so much. <laughs>